Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome back to the channel. I am super excited about this M10 IV range test review for you folk. I am a 220-pound rider, so please do keep that in mind. The tire pressure is about 40 to 45 PSI, and this is completely flat ground, flat trails, and an average speed of about 15 to 18 miles an hour. I do see a ton of you getting this wheel. The dealers stock this wheel and are shipping out this wheel. Some are still waiting to get theirs here soon. And I'm absolutely excited that so many of you decided to purchase this wheel because it is an absolute blast. Absolute blast. I am in love with this wheel. I'm so glad I purchased two of them and I want to ride them all over the place. Yes, it's no big wheel. Yes, it's not capable of doing everything. However, again, for doing fun little like city trips, going to the store or something, this thing is just an absolute fun little guy to ride around. I'm sure some of you saw the post. You can see that kind of teal little blue box on the top of mine. That is a Altec Lansing Hydra Mini, and it fits perfectly underneath the handle does not stretch the handle out, and because it's kind of a silicone rubber cover on it, it doesn't actually slide around on that plastic top. So I was able to play music most of the trip and have quite a fun trip. Again, you know, only cruising at 15 to 18 miles an hour. That was my comfort speed on this wheel with that tire and that tire pressure. So with the full face mask here, the helmet, it is a little harder to hear that speaker even at full volume. However, with the face shield up, even that full face covering my ears, I could still hear that speaker no problem while cruising around, which was fun. A lot of you ask what helmet that is in my video, and I do have two of them. So you'll see a blue variant and this white variant, and they are a Steel Bird SBA2. Main place I get them is on eBay. Some reputable sellers on there, some not. So if you guys are curious about it and the ones that I've purchased from and had success, I could drop the link below. Just comment and I will do so. My opinion is it's better than a TSG. Safety ratings might not be the same. However, it's very light. It has a better field of view. It has a really cool looking face shield that you could get in different colors. And it has much better venting than a TSG and it's about a third the cost. So back to the little wheel here, you can see just how small it is. I'm almost six foot two without shoes or anything, and the thing comes like halfway up my shins. So this video is going to be kind of all over the place with the actual video portion, and I do apologize. I was trying to get the screen, you know, the Bagode display, in the video as well as you know me actual riding around because you guys enjoy the scenery of where I ride but my cameras did end up dying I don't ask why I could have swore both were charged I do use the Insta360 Go 2s and I absolutely love them I have looked at the X2s you know so I don't have to have the selfie stick in your guys' face but I like my Go 2s too much to to go to the X2 this wheel, I did get some good foot fatigue very, very fast on this thing. You can see here I'm at 4.3 miles and 80% still. Cruising at 18 miles an hour. That 33 km down there below the speed, I do want to note for you guys that I corrected it in the description of the last video for the T4 range test and some of you still commented that is the range you have left not the top speed that 33 km there again it's not the top speed you can go it is the range you have left and from this range test it is actually extremely accurate like i was absolutely amazed it makes me not even want to go back to euc world anymore i don't pay for euc world so i don't have any of the fancy stuff i don't use any of the fancy features so I'm, I'm basically looking at my speeds and my ranges when I look at these apps. So, Bagode, if you watch my videos, can you please 
like implement a watch app so I could have this on my wrist, please. That would be very great. <laughs> Something to note for everyone watching. The display on this I did leave out in my M10 for review, and I apologize for that. However, in sunny conditions like this writing here, it does it's useless. It doesn't work. You can see I've gone 8.1 miles, 70% battery. Some of these screen clippings from the app may actually be flip-flopped in order, so please mind that. I will give you the full range of how far I got at my weight here in a little bit. But you can see there, when I look down at the wheel in the videos, you'll see it quite a few times, you cannot see that little LED display. Not in the sunlight, not with my face shield up, you cannot see it. I even, in the shaded areas, looked down to see if I could see it like I could on the T4, and no, it's a no-go. So that is a little unfortunate that the plastic top is tinted and that you can't actually see that display in any sort of good weather while you're riding around. So I thought my T4 display may have been defective. I also noted that they may have just dimmed it because people complained they were too bright at night. So I think they just dimmed it because the M10 IV is also very, very dim. You can see here that the range is a little backwards from where the last one was, so I apologize for the mix-up there. But after a while, the foot fatigue did go away, so sometimes you just got to push past it. I did not adjust pedal angle or calibrate it. I just wanted to keep riding. This here I'm coming into in a second is Rainier, Washington. I rode from Yelm at my house out here to this town, and to me it's just absolutely amazing that something this small and light and portable could get you so far. I mean, I just rode from one town to another in 20 minutes on a wheel that weighs 26 pounds and costs $1,100. It is absolutely amazing to me, and I don't think I could love EUCs any more than I already do. And then these things came along, and I want to own a whole fleet of them. So, I went past this town. This is the link trail here, the system. You can see I tried to get the map in there for you guys and where I was and how far they go. That map there doesn't even actually show you all of the trails. You could ride these trails like for days. It's amazing and I'm really happy that they put them in. I do want a quick note that although the pedals are nice and you know you, you stay fairly planted on this wheel, when you do hit roots or bumps between curbs or you know those, when they do those concrete paver things, it is a little scary on a wheel this small. I came off the pedal a few times hitting roots that were under the pavement, hidden by leaves or shadows. You can see I'm at 12.5 miles here, 50% battery. Amazing. And I popped off the pedals a couple of times and landed back on the pedals. I mean, a new rider may have gone down. <laughs> I luckily did not. It would, I would have left it in the video if I did for everyone. But... You know, just, just to note, it is a small wheel. I'm riding at a high PSI, and it does not absorb bumps very well. I made it back to Yelm. I had to stop at 507 Tap Room. Just a quick little lunch break. You can see that my range on the wheel is going, but my app was not. It started over. I lost connection, unfortunately, a couple of times. So I was I was really trying to stay connected to show you guys how far you get at what percents, like I did on the T4. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer because I was paying attention to my range on how far I was going at what speeds and at what percent battery. So I have a fun little tutorial for everyone coming up here shortly of a... Nice little trick I found on the M10 IV that I'm super excited to share with everyone. Some people may already know it, some may not. A couple of people like myself are pretty disappointed there's not a kill switch button or lift handle. So you may or may not be super excited about the update coming up here in a second. Uh, it's a few seconds, my apologies.
I would like to show you guys all a trick with the M104. So I've been kind of upset, I guess, put it in quotes, to say the least, that there is no kill switch for this wheel. Um, as you guys may or may not know, there is a way to get it in kickstand mode without having a kill switch. I was really hoping and pushing my dealer to ask Bagode to have a sequence of pushing that button there to be able to have a kill switch. However, as you could see, it is in fact on. I'm in the middle of doing my range test. I just got home. See there, <laughs> still got two bars left, which is crazy. Um, if you tilt it upright, it will re-engage the motor and it will ride. However, if you tilt it to the side far enough to hit that tilt off angle, you'll hear it, hear it beep and you can put it in kickstand mode. Also to note, with this, when it's in this mode, if you try to pick it up by that handle, you will right the wheel, as in level it, and it no longer will keep the motor disengaged. Once it's righted, it will engage the motor and it will spin freely, which is kind of unfortunate and why I was pushing so hard to get a kill switch button. However, for you guys, I just figured out how to carry this bad boy around when I go into tap rooms and food places and whatever, like today when I'm on my range test, and carry it with me. I was hunching over and grabbing it by the top of the wheel and kind of rolling it in a ridiculous, unnecessary fashion in order to get it in the places I was going, and then it kind of hit me. As long as you keep it at an angle, it will not re-engage that motor. So, if you actually reach underneath the headlight here and pick it up, you're free to carry it around all you want, which is really nice. So that's what I figured out. So you can set it back down, leave it in the Oh, kickstand mode. Sorry about that, guys. I'm recording with my phone so it doesn't have the best stability. You can see underneath here, it has kind of a really sharp edge. I might create something 3D printed wise, like the headlight shroud here, that protects your hand from kind of digging in. You can see right there the line from carrying it around. However, it's fairly close to the tire. So whatever I make will 3M on, it will include 3M, and it'll give that more of a rounded edge so it's more comfortable to pick up. But that is the way you could put this into kickstand mode and carry it around. You just have to lean it past sideways, past its tilt-off angle, it kills the motor, so you could put it in kickstand mode, and then you could pick it up underneath the headlight and carry it around, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to get back to the range test now, so stay tuned. Keep watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that little snippet there of how I figured out how to carry it around and keep it on. Not sure if you guys are as adamant as I am about trying to stay connected to your wheel while you're out and about and riding around, but I don't like to disconnect, especially when I'm doing these range tests here. So you can see here, you know, I'm doing the screen recording thing, switching between the app and then the camera on my phone. So I do apologize for how shaky it is. This was a fairly long video. So some of these sequences I did speed up quite a bit. So I, I do apologize if, if they're fast. You know, it's I was just trying to get it cut down to a decent amount of time for you guys to watch it. I made it home and, you know, that was from Yelm out to Rainier and back. And then I still had 20, 30% battery. So I was like, ah, I'm just going to go cruise around, go stop at 507 again, circle back and go home just to get this wheel all the way to dead. So you can see there again, if you look down, you cannot see that display at all in the sunlight. It is not, it's non-existent. So don't have your high hopes for that at all. You can't see it there. So all in all, with this range test, I had an absolute blast. 
the average speed you can see there, my top speed was 21, was again about 15, 18 miles an hour, which for me in this wheel was a very comfortable speed. You know, you're not getting far, you're not, you're not no Sherman, you're not getting 100 miles, but you're on a 26 pound wheel that you can just tote around places and, you know, cruise 20 miles from 20 miles an hour from shop to shop or whatever. This is kind of 507. There it is. They have two little tap rooms in Yelm. One's kind of smaller and not open as many hours, and there's the other one. You can see here I'm down to 20% fluctuating between 20 and 10, hit zero there for a second. You will see the high voltage warning pop up. There it is several times from now forward. And mind you guys, I do turn off my tilt backs. I do turn off my speed alarms, everything of the above, because I do not push my wheels like some do. So what I wanted to do in this video, unlike the T4, is once I got down to these lower percents, especially with how small this wheel is, is I really wanted to push it and see what happens when I try to accelerate fast and just cruise at these low speeds. So it the wheel does beep at you when the high voltage pops up and the app does pop up the high voltage, which is nice. I did not feel any tilt backs. I did not get any tilt backs and I did not ride this wheel until extreme tilt back. I don't like going that far with my wheels, but realistically, this is the range you're looking at. You can see that high voltage pop up quite a bit. You could easily cruise at 15, 18 miles an hour at 10%. However, you cannot accelerate fast to get there. It will beep at you, the warning will come up. I do not push my wheels, so I did not want to face plant and crash my wheel, so I did not push it hard. I got to those beeps, I let it beep, and then I let it back a little bit. But I continue to do that even here at 0%. So you can see it kind of fluctuating back and forth there, and I'm not going as fast as I was previously. However, you can, like I said, cruise at that 15 still. You just have to be very careful about it. You know, I'm sure the wheel will tilt you back. However, my tilt back stuff is turned off and it did not do it for me. It just beeped. All in all, out of this wheel, I did get 27.1 miles from start to finish, which for me is absolutely baffling that a wheel this small and technology has come this far. I'm super, super excited that I have these. I'm really excited that everybody's getting their hands on them so soon. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed the range test with me and that I gave you all the feedback and information I could in regards to the wheel, my accessories, anything like that. You can see that high voltage continuing to pop up. I just made it home. I did get a 5 amp charger for it, the 4 pin that's for the MCM5 and maybe some other wheels. So I will be going into that here in a minute. So you can see here I'm... Getting at 10 miles an hour, 0%. I was riding it for a while, just trying to get home. And it made it, you know. Again, the high voltage popped up. But here I am, cruising right up to my garage. Success. So, 27.1 miles. The display is off here, but the wheel's actually on. So, I think it does cut unnecessary things and shuts them off when you're at that low of a percent. So, you can see here... Um, connected to the app, it went actually back up to 10%. And then that there is the total mileage I got. So 33.6 from the 6.5 at the beginning. This is the 5 amp 4 pin charger. I believe it's the fast charger for the MCM5 and maybe a couple other wheels. You can see the voltage there and the temperature there. It is non adjustable. There's no adjustments or anything on it. You can't turn it down. There's the two little indicator lights. And there's the little M104. So she be charging. It's working. We're going to see how quick it works. It'd be very handy to have something like this. I mean, if I could get 27, 30 miles out of that wheel at 15, 18 miles an hour, and I could plug it in when I sit down at a restaurant, Starbucks, coffee shop, whatever, you name it, then, you know, you could continue on for quite a ways with just something that small. Just quite amazing. Hello, little guy. We're also going to see how long it takes to charge it because this was basically dead. I mean, we were almost at extreme tilt back 
and this is a 5 amp charger so in reality it should only take about an hour and a half two hours to charge the wheel so we will see i will keep you guys updated at the end of the video quick update on the charging it has been an hour and 20 minutes of fast charging that little dinker and we are at 83.9 volts only one of the two leds is green so I'm assuming it is trickling at this point. I'm going to wait and see if both turn green. Well, I just looked at the manual and the red indicator is just that this has power and the green does mean that it's fully charged. So with a 5 amp charger, it only took an hour and 20 minutes to charge this wheel from basically dead. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and ringing that bell. If you have any questions, comments, or anything of the above, please drop it down below. And I hope you all have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.